So in this video here, we're going to talk about Edge TPU inference on a Raspberry Pi. So we're going to take a look at how we can set up the Google Coral TPU. So you've probably heard about CPU, GPU. So we have the central processing unit, graphical processing unit, but now we also have a TPU from Google. So that's a tensor processing unit. So it's actually been out there for a long time and we're going to see how we can set that up and run inference. So we can run it on Edge devices like a Raspberry Pi, which is very limited on resources, but also a very low end board where you can run inference with Yolvi 8 from Ultralytics. So this is basically just a tensor processing unit. All we're doing once we're running inference is basically just tensor operations. We take our images, throw them through the model, do a bunch of tensor operations, and then we get the output out. And that is how we can use this hardware accelerator, which is called a Google curl. And we're going to see how we can set that up with Ultralytics. So let's just jump straight into the Ultralytics documentation. If you go inside our guides tab, we can see all the different guys available in here. We also have it for NVIDIA Jetson Nano. If you're looking for deploying your AI models and update detection models from Autolytics on edge devices to get the fastest inference speed and also on some lower end hardware. So if we scroll a bit further down, we can then see that we have this edge TPU on Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi is significantly cheaper compared to a Jetson Nano. And then we can just connect this curl its tpu directly into our raspberry pi which only has a cpu so there's no gpu available on the raspberry pi so here you can basically just see inside the documentation we have the raspberry pi and then we have connected this google curl into it so this is basically just for its tensor processing unit we can read about a bit about it here but let's just talk about what it acts like is and it's basically just so we can boost the performance of a raspberry pi with this hardware accelerator so it's just as if you're connecting a gpu to the system we just have this very small tpu from google so it's a bit outdated some of the dependencies all of that all the frameworks working together so tensorflow Lite, all of that from google is not really well supported any longer but if you're still looking for using it we have the specific guides in here how to get it up and running in the correct way so all the dependencies and versions match so this is a pretty good guide to follow through and definitely recommend you do it you can go with a raspberry pi it's a relatively cheap board i think it's around like 80 80 to 100 dollars or something like that in total and then you have to curl a usb accelerator which is also probably around hundred dollars but then we can act like significantly increase the speed of our inference so if you're just running cpu on a raspberry pi you won't even be able to squeeze out a couple of frames per seconds with the yellow eight models compared to if you're using a tpu so the edge tpu you'll probably be able to do 5 to 10x inference speed, especially if you can export the models to TensorFlow Lite as well. So it really depends on the model sizes and so on that you're using, but you can get significant speed ups by using this Edge TPU. So these are the prerequisites. We also need a non-ARM based platform for exporting the Ultralytics PyTorch models. So we know that we can just load the PyTorch files and export them. So we need a non-ARM based system. So that could be Intel CPUs, AMD CPUs and so on. If you're on a MacBook that is ARM based, so you won't be able to export the Ultralytics PyTorch model with ARM based systems, but you can just go and use Google Colab, for example, and export the models in there. So now we're going to go through the installation because again, it's not really well supported from Google any longer. There's some dependencies, versions and so on that is not matching any longer. So this is basically the best guide out there and just pretty simple, just a couple of steps that we need to follow. So first of all, we need to see what Raspberry Pi operating system are we running? Do we want to run it in high frequency mode and also the version that we want to download? So then you can just press this link here and it will automatically go in and download it. Once we have done that, we can use the package management system on our Linux machine. So all of these are Linux distributions. So we just have sudo dpkg i, and then we have the path to our Debian file where we can just install this package directly from. First of all, make sure that you have a clean installation or at least have uninstalled the curl stpu runtime if you have installed that before, and then you can go in and remove it with these commands and before we can actually go in and install it again. So if you run into any problems, make sure that you have it from scratch, uninstall all the runtimes and so on that you have already, both for TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite and so on, which we're going to cover in just a second. But right now we should be able to just set up this package here for our um, edge TPU runtime. Once we have done that, we can go in and export our model with Ultralytics. It's just a single line, or you can also just use the Python code, but it's basically just calling this task so to export yolo command export we specify the model you can both use a pre trained model out of the box from ultralytics you can just specify it directly in here or you can use your own custom trained models we have tons of videos covering 
every single aspect of it here both in the documentation but also on our youtube channel so definitely go and check those videos out they're very helpful and then you can just export the models directly then we need to specify our format you can use all the different formats available out there and also supported by Autolytics. we support all the most common export formats and frameworks so now we just specify edge tpu there we go and we're pretty much good to go it will export the model here into this folder and we will have this tf light model extension now we're going to see how we can run the model so again we can just directly run it with our yolo command predict or in python code as well it's just a few lines of code as any other model that we're using with Ultralytics. We just need to specify the path to a TF Live model instead of our PyTorch model. This is basically just like how you can run the model. Make sure that you have curled your STPU connected to the device. It's going to detect it automatically and so on if you have set up the runtime in the correct way and it works. So first of all here, make sure that you have the correct TensorFlow runtime and not just TensorFlow in general. So if TensorFlow is already installed on your system, pre-installed, or you have been playing around with it before, make sure that you uninstall that first of all, so you can just pip uninstall TensorFlow and also TensorFlow RX64. And then you can go ahead and install or update the TensorFlow runtime. So this is pretty much just these commands here. It's just a few commands. So you basically just download the runtime, install the package with your OS, and then you just have to run these commands. Then you're pretty much good to go, and you can then run inference on edge TPUs with a Raspberry Pi connected with a curl. So this is pretty much everything that we need to do. Again, make sure that you have this TensorFlow runtime if you run into any errors. You can also go in and read about the FAQs here, but this is pretty much what we have covered throughout this video. It's really simple. Only a few steps that you need to do if you run into any problems, make sure that you start with a phrase install and also install an update to the latest version with Ultralytics. So this can significantly speed up your models when you want to run inference. You can use all the YOLO models available in there, pre-trained and also your custom models. So I hope you learned a ton in this video here. Definitely go in and check it out. So this is pretty awesome because the Raspberry Pis, they're very cheap, could be specific systems where you want to run update detection models, low end hardware could be security cameras and so on. And you don't really want to have a dedicated GPU sitting around, they're expensive and so on. We can just have this very small edge device with our Raspberry Pi and connect it to a very small hardware accelerator with the Google curl. So definitely go and check it out if you're interested. I hope this guide has helped you a lot. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.